Okay, everyone, we are about to start the next talk with Vic Sharma of Cake Technologies, which is the creator of Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet is the most used and the very first Monero iOS wallet. So please give it a hand for him and uh, enjoy his talk. Actually, I've never seen the room clear out faster than uh, when they announced my name. So uh, everyone can hear me? Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm Vic Sharma. I'm the uh, founder of uh, Cake Technologies, which, as Justin said, is the maker of Cake Wallet. We were the first uh, Monero wallet for iOS, um, uh, first open source wallet for, uh, for Monero on iOS. Um, just to give you a quick um, background of me, I'm, um, I'm actually, you'll see the last line, I'm actually uh, head of a steel company. We're the largest uh, wire rod producer in the U.S., uh, 1,500 employees, so that's my real job. <laughs> so, um, on Cake Wallet, we've, today we've got close to 18,000 unique installs. That's unique per Apple ID. Um, and the uh, Apple App Store also shows active users per certain amount of time. So we have roughly 1,000 active users uh, weekly that are actually using the app. Um, since its first launch, we also put in uh, three exchanges. Those are third-party exchanges, um, which is Morph Token, um, XMR2, and ChangeNow. And people always talk about what kind of volume they're, uh, they're doing through the wallet. Ask me in private, and I'll let you know. <laughs> we don't make that public. Um, so, I'll just start here. So this is a, some uh, screenshots of our app. You can see the send screen, receive screen, exchange screen, just standard wallet stuff. So we started building the app in middle of 2017, June, July. And we built it in a vacuum. We didn't consult with the community. We didn't talk to anybody. I think we went to the uh, Monero Reddit maybe once, and saw, okay, they were working on the community supporting some wallet, and we said, okay, let's ignore it, let's just do our own thing. And we continued, and we launched in January of 2018, and we were closed source. But we didn't know we were closed source. We didn't know we were what open source was. We didn't know much at all. So we learned very quickly from the community that uh, if it's not open source, then get out. So I'll just, I'm going to jump around here on the slides, if you don't mind, just to show you some feedback we got from the community. Right here, these are actual screenshots from January 2018, reply from the community. No open source, thanks, but no thanks. So some people are very harsh, you know. Let's see the code, not going anywhere near this. So the community spoke loud and clear, so we really had to quickly get our act together. And just go back to this screen. So closed source, uh, open source, I didn't even know what it meant, right? I didn't know. I'll tell you what I thought it meant, and uh, feel free to laugh. I thought it meant if you're using some part of open source code that's already existing out there and you're using it, then you're open source. Well, that's not what it means. It means you have to open your code. You have to open your source and show all the cards, yeah? So, started looking, and by the way, this is our, this presentation is on our journey of going from closed source to open source. So we reached out to the community. So you'll see, there's my, my uh, comment on Reddit from January 2018. Any advice on making it open source would be appreciated. Yeah? So, you guys know uh, user Rarar, Diego from Cypher Market. He was the uh, first one to reach out to me. And he said, this exact word, he's like, dude, you got to go open source. <laughs> so, so we started doing research, getting educated. Uh, Diego was really helpful. And it, it, I'll tell you, it's very confusing. There's just so many different licenses. There's so many groups maintaining licenses. Um, so we just looked at a few. And in the end, we ended up going with the MIT, um, with the MIT license. Why did we go with that? Because it's very broad, 
we thought, okay, it's uh, if we're going to go open source, if we're going to put it all out there, let, let's make it broad. Let, uh, let people use it, let people modify it, let people um, launch their own apps with it. Um, but that was a big concern of ours, yeah? So before I get to that, I'll just quickly. So what is, what is uh, open source software? Free and open source software. Um, I'm not going to read it to you, but there's no universal agreed on definition. But this is pretty much what most of the people agree on. And why isn't it agreed upon? Because if you see the description there, you'll see for any purpose, modify the program as they want, test freely, distribute, blah, blah, blah. But different licenses have different limitations. You know, you, some have, you can't use it for commercial purpose, or you can't use it for this purpose, or you can't modify it, or who knows, a bunch of, bunch of different uh, guidelines for different licenses. But this is a very broad definition, and I think most people agree that this is the broad definition. You know? So who maintains these licenses? Where do they come from? So there, again, there's, there's many people, there's many organizations, but the two most uh, that pe people follow and, and uh, they maintain these licenses. One is the uh, Open Source Initiative and the other is the Free Software Foundation. Um, and there's, again, there's just so many different licenses. It's, I'm not going to go through each one. But by the way, doing the research on this, I came across the last license, uh, doing research for this presentation. I came across the last one. I think we should have uh, gone, gone with that one. It's do whatever the fuck you want with a public license. It's actually a license. You can use it. So what was our biggest concern at the time when the community said go open source, go open source? Our concern was exactly this, that someone's going to take, we're new to the community, we're, we're newbies, there's people smarter than us, there's uh, people more involved in Monero than we are that will be listened to and respected more than we are than a new player. And that was our concern, that someone's going to just copy it and somebody within the community, somebody everybody knows, and they're going to build something uh, better and faster than us, and we're going to be cut out. So why is that? And again, I think it all comes back down to the, the community and the community supporting what you're trying to do. And um, willingness to go open source, that's very much rewarded in the Monero community. So what are the advantages of going open source? Now, there's numerous advantages, but I just want to hit on three which which really affected us and which we appreciated as we went through this process, was again the community. The first one was the community, so let's go with that one. So if you go open source, if you have an app out there and you're worried, what's going to happen? Same concerns we had. You're going to become part of that community. There's going to be a community that follows you, and there's going to be a community that supports you. They're going to give you ideas. They will criticize you brutally, but uh, it's, it's very much needed. And people were mean to us, by the way, when we came out. Um, again, so this was a community response. And, you know, that, that spoke highly. And, I mean, comment after comment. If you go to our original Reddit post, comment after comment. Open source, open source, open source. And even for, as we're trying to figure out, every day I would get a message, when are you going open source? But the interesting thing was that showed me that, okay, there is a huge demand for this app. There's a huge demand. People want something like this, but they just want something they can see, they can trust, um, and verify. Yeah. So another great advantage of going open source is longevity. So even though my biggest fear was that we're going to get cut out and somebody's going to copy us, and by the way, somebody has copied us. They didn't do it for Monero, but they did it for a Monero fork coin. I don't remember their name right now. Um, which is fine, but longevity. If something were to happen to Kate Technologies today, something happened to me, something happened to our developers, somebody in the community can pick it up and Cake Wallet will continue. They'll hopefully improve on it, modify it to whatever the, the community likes or the customers like. So what we thought was uh, our biggest concern can't, turned out to be the biggest asset, I feel, that Cake Wallet will continue. Um, and you even see um, people would contribute, and that happens. I mean, that happens a lot. Um, a lot of people call us, or a lot of people modify and, and do whatever, and, and we we incorporate those changes. We get the community involved. Security. I mean, Monero being money oriented and being uh, value oriented—that's always a big concern. I, I remember getting uh, comments that 
how do we know you're not stealing a Monero? How do you, you probably have a code in there that once you hit 10 Monero, then you, t you take our Monero. So by the way, that number is 100, not 10. We're not cheap. <laughs> so, but so far, nothing. So far, no, uh, no losses in, uh, in, in anybody's Monero uh, in, in Cake Wallet. It's working well. But, but people like that feel. They, they want to know that the community has, has vetted the app, has looked at the code. And again, if you go back and look at, look at uh, Reddit comments, many, many of the users have come back and said, hey guys, I've, I've looked at the code, everything's kosher, everything's great, this is, uh, this is fine. And they're not stealing our, stealing our Monero. So I, I guess this is going much faster than I thought. Um, conclusion is don't fear open source. Um, the community will back you, they will reward you uh, in terms of use, in terms of technical support, in terms of marketing support. Um, and I'd like to leave everybody also with a little life lesson, uh, which we, we went through while building Cake Wallet. Don't worry about it, what other people are doing. Yeah, When we started building Cake Wallet, we r went on Reddit m by mistake, and we saw there was somebody building in the community supporting some other wallet. And at that time, we could have said, oh, no, there's, uh, they're already building another wallet. Let's not do it. But we ignored it. We thought, okay, let's not worry about it. So th it's a little life lesson. If you want to do something, if you want to build something, go ahead and do it. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Because you may be smarter. You may be doing it better. You may be doing it differently. Um, so for me, that was a huge life lesson during uh, building Cake Wallet. So sorry I rushed through it, but uh, that's the presentation. Yeah. Questions? <laughs>